lovies and welcome back to crazy but not dangerous i'm shorty vaughn and tonight we're having a tales from the step stool got my step stool right here i'm on the short one today um yeah tales from the step stool well usually i do a tales from the step stool on nights that we have frozen pizza or sandwiches that are not very interesting um and every once in a while i do a tales from the step stool when my recipe does not go according to plan yeah that's what happened today so my video today was going to be about how to make hard-boiled eggs in the crock pot in two and a half to three hours i did my research this is a recipe that plenty of websites say work perfectly um maybe it does but it didn't happen for me and I've gone back and forth, back and forth on whether or not I was going to show that video. And came to the conclusion that no, I was not going to show that video. Not because I'm afraid of showing you a failure. Yeah, I'm willing to try all kinds of things. I love experimenting in the kitchen. Sometimes they work out great. That's the video. Sometimes they don't work out. And I him haw around about whether or not I'm going to show it. What the deciding factor is on, on whether I show it or not is because there is a good percentage of viewers of my channel that only watch the first three minutes, maybe. And maybe they see me put it in the crock pot, tell you to turn it on high for, th you know, two and a half to three hours, and you will have hard-boiled eggs, and that's all they watch, and then they're off. And they think that that recipe works. Yeah, it kind of worked. You know who I'm always saying I'm not mad at it? Well, I'm kind of mad at my hard-boiled eggs in the crock pot. So they were standard large eggs I got at the grocery store. I put them into the crock pot. I covered them with water. I turned it high, and I just let it go, just like the recipe said. At two and a half hours, I went ahead and grabbed one of my eggs and cracked it, and it was soft-boiled. So two and a half hours, not long enough. So I let them go for the three hours because it said two and a half to three hours. At three hours, they were, in my opinion, overcooked. I think it's raining. Yeah, maybe that's rain. That's surprising. Okay, so at three hours, in my opinion, they were overcooked. They were hard boiled but they have that green tinge on the inside and I do not prefer that. Yeah, it was, it was not preferable. I, we are going to eat them. We are going to eat them in an egg salad, but they would be unappetizing to me to eat as a hard boiled egg for breakfast with just a little um, salt and pepper and what have you. So I'm not showing those. Plus then the more I'm thinking about it, I can cook boiled eggs like a whole dozen, like 15 minutes. It's three hours in your crock pot. Yeah, you could put it on, set it and forget it. Go to lunch with your friends or go shopping or do whatever. You could do all of those things and come back to hard boiled eggs in three hours. But they're, they might have that little bit of green. If you don't like that little bit of green on your hard boiled eggs, then that is not a method that I recommend. They were not easy to peel. They look, yeah, they look bad. Yeah, they, there's, I can't think of a redeeming quality about them besides the fact that they are not raw. So I do not recommend that method. If you have experienced a different outcome, please let me know down below because I'll try again. Yeah, I'm gonna go outside and see if it's really raining. Well, that's completely awesome it's raining we're so unaccustomed to it i had to go look to make sure because i can hit it hear it hitting the vent pipe of my of my stove you know up on the roof and it kind of echoes down but yeah no it's raining no thunder no lightning no wind there's just a blue night sky with one cloud that is kind of just over my house i'm okay with that that's awesome yay hooray i'll take a little rain thank you all right, so where were we? Yeah, I don't recommend the hard-boiled eggs in the crock pot. It was a waste of time, effort, 
and we'll eat them plenty of mayonnaise yeah some relish some celery some celery seeds and paprika it will cover up that ever so slightly you know sulfuric over boiled uh taste yeah it'll be fine we can save it that's the important part all right tales from the step stool that's where i usually say howdy to all my lovies hello and then you know tell some kind of amusing little story i have a lot of new subscribers so i'm shorty vaughn i'm four foot five i live in phoenix arizona um i have one husband andrew i have one dog that's pig pen and then i have a feral cat that i feed and take care of that lives outside um his name is f scott fitzgerald and um love them all they're all my babies i host family dinner once a month here at the house um our next family dinner is going to be on october 29th yeah we're going to have some great halloween kind of things for all the for all the kids kids of all ages yep young and old yay hooray because i love halloween i do i love to dress up i still dress up yeah i still dress up i don't go trick-or-treating anymore because it's not really appropriate and i don't want to take kid candy away from little kids but i trick-or-treated for a very long time it was kind of you know i kind of just accidentally kind of fell into it so i enjoyed trick-or-treating you know up until like 13 14 years old and then felt like maybe i had outgrown it um but i still had to go to take my younger siblings i have five older sisters two younger sisters a younger brother some of them are living some of them have passed but i had to take the little ones to go trick-or-treating and i stopped growing when i was 10 years old so this is you know i am the size of a 10 year old child and i wear a size four in the kids department for shoes so yeah there you go so i would take my younger brothers and sisters trick-or-treating because you know you're the oldest you take them blah 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 and so we would go trick-or-treating and i would just kind of stand back and, nice nice older women come here young and come here baby and get yourself some candy where's your bag you've got no bag well yeah i didn't think i would get candy i'm just taking oh i'm gonna go get you a bag right now and they come out with a bag put half the bucket of candy in there and say we don't want you to miss out baby go on ahead and pretty much like every year i had no anticipation of doing anything besides dressing up taking my younger sisters and brother trick-or-treating but every year there's this one older woman you know not the same one all the time a different one where's your bag where's your candy you're not getting any yum yums and, and i would go home with a bag full of candy and so i trick-or-treated for a very very long time it is almost shameful to tell you how long i trick-or-treated but well into my 20s i trick-or-treated because the never kids never stopped coming once my younger brothers and sisters got you know all grown up and too old for trick-or-treating and halloween my older sisters had kids and well go out with aunt shorty aunt shorty will take you trick-or-treating she loves it and i did and so i would take them all trick-or-treating and we would come home with pillowcases just overflowing with candy and we would all sit at the table and you know look at the candy make sure everything was you know kosher <clears throat> pardon me and you know then you then you start to do your swaps you know i'll trade you three snickers bars for you know three kit kats look at it my favorite candy tootsie rolls love them love them my sister patty loved tootsie rolls too Sometimes she would go trick-or-treating with us. Sometimes my sister Sherry would also go trick-or-treating with us. It was a great time. And the whole family got involved and loved it. And so, we, yeah, trick-or-treating. I trick-or-treated for a very, very long time. And that, yeah. Now, now Jackie has young ones and they don't go trick-or-treating anymore. They go to some kind of 
trunk or treat or something over at the church or something like that. They do things like that. Uh, so no more trick or treat. Now I am the old lady that passes out candy and wants to know where your bag is. Where's your bag, baby? Here, I got one for you right here. And then, you know, let me put some candy in there to get you caught up with your, you know, brothers and sisters and friends and what have you. Look both ways. Be careful, you know. It, my porch light's on. I just sit out front so that they don't ring the bell endlessly and irritate the dog and the husband. But I love it. I have a few Halloween decorations. I'll do a little pumpkin. I had a fog machine, but it died last year. And I'm probably not going to replace it. But I do have like a strobe light. Might put that on in the garage. That's a little spooky. But I love Halloween. And I blame my parents. Yeah. I know a lot of people blame their parents for all kinds of things. Pretty much I take responsibility for my own, you know, wackadoodles uh, myself. Yeah. Not all of them are because of my parents. Some, yes. But I blame my love of Halloween on my mom and dad because I love all things scary. One of the very first movies that I can tell you that I really loved and enjoyed. My parents took us to the drive through movies, let me tell you. So we drove a great big green station wagon, yeah, with the wood paneling. And um, it had three rows of seating and a hatchback no seat belts because that car only came with six seat belts but there were 11 people that we crammed into that car and so my dad how do you choose which one of which one of your kids is going to get a seat belt and which one isn't well you know what you do you cut all the seat belts out of it and then nobody fights and it's an even playing field so again we didn't have any seat belts it was a long long time ago a different time People weren't that concerned about wearing a seatbelt. We didn't know then what we know now. And if we did, my dad didn't care because he cut all the seatbelts out of our cars. We also didn't have air conditioning because he wasn't going to spend extra money on air conditioning when you could roll down your window for free. So there's that. So we would all pile into the station wagon and we would go to the drive-in movies. And it was $3.00 for a carload. It didn't matter if you had two people in there or if you had, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14 kids all smashed in, you know, to go to the movies. So that's what we usually did on like a Friday or a Saturday night. We would go to the movies and there was only one screen. So you just watched whatever was playing back then. So the night we went to the movies was October. And it was a double feature, Amityville Horror and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yay, hooray. And, you know, we got there early before the sun went down. And my mom had popped a huge garbage bag full of popcorn. And we had sandwiches and sodas and all kinds of things like that. Because we're on a, we're on a budget. We're on a tight budget. So we've got all this stuff. And... We're running around and there's a playground and we're just waiting for dark for the movies to start. And maybe the thought was that we were going to wear ourselves out and we wouldn't, you know, make it to the scary movie. That sometimes happened with Dumbo. Yeah, it didn't happen with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I couldn't stop watching. I couldn't believe my eyes. I couldn't. I was so scared and it made me jump and feel so excited. And it really instilled a love of horror movies in me like nobody's business and a love of Halloween. Before that, it was just trick-or-treating. And, you know, we never really played any tricks on anybody. Just me and my cute little kitty cat costume trick-or-treat. You know, getting a bunch of candy. Yeah, I had no idea about these scary movies. It was fantastic. So after that, yeah. I want to watch scary movies all the time. Well, we had a, quite a bit of scary movies available to us, actually. On Sundays, you always had Vincent Price Theater in the late afternoons. And then on Saturday night, you had Mr. Scary, who was in nighttime, um, started at like 10 p.m. host of the B-Horror Flicks. 
and yeah, it ended about midnight. He was this Mr. Scary Guy and he would come up out of the coffin and he would sing the worm song. Do you all know the worm song? Let me know down below if you know the worm song. Anyhow, he would sing the worm song. He would read fan mail and you could write to him. So my sister and I, we wrote to Mr. Scary. Dear Mr. Scary, we love your shows. We love scary movies. We love the worm song. Thanks for being a great host. You know, keep at it. And he read our letter on TV. We were so excited. We're sitting there. Oh, oh, that's our letter. That's our letter. He's reading it. And he turns and he says, and girls, if you want to come down to the studio next weekend, glad to host you. Yeah, you can sit in the coffin and we can all sing the worm song together. And we're doing this happy dance. But we have to be quiet because my parents would let us stay up quite late to watch scary movies. Um, so long as we didn't wake them up and you couldn't sleep in their bed. If you watched a scary movie that was too scary, you had to comfort each other. Because there is no getting in the bed with my mom and dad. Uh-uh. They were not going to have it. There were too many of us and not enough bed, that's for sure. Anyhow, yeah, so we're going to go see Mr. Scary at, at the studio. We wake up the next day. We're getting ready for church. We're telling my dad, Mr. Scary invited us down next weekend. Yada, yada, yada. We want to go. Will you take us? My dad's, yes, yes, I'll take you to see Mr. Scary you know, we'll call the studio and work it all out on Monday, you know, when you got home from school. So we go to church and we do our thing and we're excited about, you know, going back to school on Monday and Mr. Scary and everything. And we wake up Monday morning and my dad's reading the newspaper and we're, you know, eating some Cheerios or whatever. My dad looks at us and says, girls, I got bad news. And he turns the newspaper around. And there's Mr. Scary. Mr. Scary got arrested on a morals charge and had to resign his show. And yeah, yeah, we never got to go sing Mr. Uh, sing the worm song with Mr. Scary. We didn't get to ride around in the coffin. We didn't, yeah, that was the end of our late night horror shows on Saturday night. So we just went back to watching Vincent Price Theater. Um, but yeah, we... Baby sister and I still love scary movies. Um, we've, we've seen them all. We've seen the Jasons and the Freddies and the ones with the pin in your face and Michael Myers and all of them. Yeah, we, and now we talk on the phone. We'll watch them. Are, are you, are you, which, which one are you watching? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Poltergeist. Yeah, that's a good one. That's one of my favorites. Poltergeist, one of my all-time favorites. I still love Amityville Horror and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I thought those were all great. And I know scary movies are not for everybody, but I just love them. I know it's kind of weird and ridiculous, and I kind of miss going trick-or-treating, too, especially when I'm low on candy like tonight. You know, I'm not running out for candy in the middle of the night, but I might get some tomorrow. Anyhow, so that's my Tales from the Step Stool. I never got to go see Mr. Scary. He got arrested on a morals charge. Probably somebody was looking out for us because, you know, Lord only knows what would have happened. My dad was kind of a drop you off and wait in the parking lot kind of dad. You know, all right, girls. Yeah, go, go ask somebody where you go. I'll be here in the parking lot if you need me. And he liked to listen to AM radio. And he liked to listen to baseball, basketball, whatever we had going on, whatever he could tune in. But yeah, he spent a lot of time listening to AM radio in the car while we were, you know, doing whatever it was that we did. So, yep, driving scary movies with my parents in the big old green station wagon. We had a great time. Yeah, it's after 9.30. I'm still drinking a little bit of coffee. And I won't have one problem going to bed at night. I am so tired, you wouldn't even believe it. All right, my lovelies. Well, be good. Be careful. Look both ways. You know, yay Halloween. See you next time. Have a great night. Bye-bye.